welcome. To kick off with this upload straight away, I thought I would cover Elon Musk's battle with Twitter. For me, I just see it as the battle of the Freemasons, as I've always said the Freemasons are pirates and they will always fight amongst themselves to be at the top. Before I go further into the Elon Musk situation, I'll put out the actual first airing of his projected buy of Twitter. Take a look. Elon Musk has revealed that if he succeeds in buying Twitter, he will reverse the social media giant's decision to ban Donald Trump and reinstate the former president's account. The prospective buyer, who's the world's richest person, warned he believes permanent bans should be extremely rare as he attempts to push through his £35 billion deal. Banning Trump from Twitter didn't end Trump's voice. It will amplify it among the right. And this is why it is morally wrong and flat out stupid. Following that proposed buy offer, there would be many people who would obviously be very disgruntled in relation to him as an Elon Musk trying to purchase Twitter. One of those people who would be very vocal in relation to being very objective in relation to Elon Musk buying Twitter would be Bruce Daisley, who would be a former vice president of Twitter, and he had let it be known that it wouldn't be safe for one person to have control over the whole aspect of speech and content of speech within Twitter. There was also some rumours going around that there would be some sort of sabotage by a left-wing members within the takeover bid being successful. As of yet, we will have to wait and see whether or not half of their claims may or may not be true. Even within Elon Musk mentioning his attempts to purchase Twitter, his Tesla firm has also taken a sharp hit within the stock market. As you can see, I've even got Tesla Tech covered as part of the Masonic powerhouse as it is. The actual true price for the actual original purchase price relating to the $44 billion mark, well, in British pound at that very moment, it was just over $33.6 billion. Even there, which attracted my attention to the story, was enough for me to see how this will play out as in over the remainder of 2022 and 2023 should the court case be delayed or exhausted to a point where it may well run into 2023. As Elon Musk says within his tweet, as you can see I've put tweeting as 33 also, only time will tell whether or not he really will be politically neutral should he actually be forced to buy Twitter if he's still interested in buying Twitter, albeit at a reduced price should he have some of his arguments actually upheld within the court argument. The next famous face within this upload that I've decided to cover is Tyson Fury. There's been a lot of speculation that Tyson Fury is willing to come out of retirement to fight another opponent. At the time when he had decided to declare his retirement, I noticed two things. One of them being that he was, first of all, at the time aged 33 when he decided to assume to be calling it a day. And he has also, up until this point, of September 2022 been undefeated 33 times. Let's take a look at what he said at the time after he won his 33rd undefeated bout. Take a look. A lot of people don't know, but Frank brought me back from the brink of death and believed in me and gave me a big contract 
to box again, um, when everybody else was probably scared to get me in the ring again. For me, he is without a doubt the best heavyweight of his generation. Sure. He would be a great heavyweight in any generation, and he's the best, I've got to say it now, probably the best fighter I've ever been involved with. I thought I was boxing really well. I thought I was using a jab, smashing him up with a jab. He tried to make it rough, fair play to him. He was trying to manhandle me in there, but, you know, have you ever tried wrestling with a dinosaur before? I'm like a T-Rex in there. I'm six foot nine, 270 pounds. It's difficult. I threw some good punches in my career, but it was definitely a definitely Wembley Stadium showstopper, wasn't it? Big right up I got. I think Lennox Lewis could definitely be proud of that. I'm going to retire as the only second heavyweight in history after Rocky Marciano to retire undefeated. I've won two English titles, two British titles, two Commonwealth titles, the Irish title, the European title, WBO Intercontinental, WBO International, WBO Super, WBA Super, IBF, IBO, Ring Magazine, Lineal, WBC, WBC Mayan, WBC Global. I've won every belt there is to win. There isn't nothing more I can do. I've won every belt in the game. If this was a computer game, it would definitely be completed, for sure. So there you saw it for yourself, what Tyson Fury had to say in relation to achieving everything that he could possibly achieve. Fair play to him, he has managed to pick his fights well and win his fights well. If you actually go back to his overall history in terms of where he came from and where he comes from, as he obviously has it always held high in his heart, is that he has made it no secret to himself calling himself the Gypsy King. So as you're seeing the pictures, you will also notice that Gypsy life is actually also 33. And along with the fact that should he truly decide to come out of retirement and challenge for a possible 34th undefeated fight, then you will obviously see from the pictures that he will be working hard on the punch bag within the gym along with all the other training facilities and as I've deliberately highlighted, even punch bag is 33. So truly within Tyson Fury's career, it really has been something else in relation to himself being at the top of his sport. Just before I continue on to the next moment of 33 madness, I thought I would just quickly mention about, aside from having to now buy a roll at 33 pence each at this point in Glasgow, I also managed to come across a special deal in relation to getting some toiletries, in this case, some aftershave, which I don't buy that often. It just so happens that as I was scouring on the web in terms of the Boots website, I came across a Hugo Boss deal at an astonishing price of £33.33. And 33 pence. Even within the deal itself, it had a decent amount of actual fluid within the actual bottle in regards to being 75 millilitres rather than 50 millilitres. As you can see we have now Salman Rushdie in terms of his attack which happened over the last week or two and the thing about the actual picture you can see in relation to the satanic verses which is the whole apparent provocation of this incident um, it's no surprise that, as you can see it's saying here, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. And again, as you will notice within the actual book and the picture which I've put out, you can see that satanic cult is also 33. Before I go further into the actual overall story and reports into this incident, I thought I would just play out the actual video footage that has gone out along with the news story. Take a look.
Okay, so you just saw the limited footage of the aftermath of that incident. From when I picked up and looked at the story, as you can see from the face of it, there doesn't really seem to be much really to say about it, other than the fact if you are tuned in or you are aware of the overall bigger picture, there's a few things that will immediately jump out once you do your research. The first of those things is obviously straight away you can see that it is 33 years after the actual threat was issued apparently by Iran at that time. And as I say that the next bigger picture in relation to the whole staged world that it is, if you look at the fact that I've highlighted Shatakwa and Ayatollah, well, if we start with the Chautauqua area of New York, like all major assassination attempts or anything like that, they will always have famous areas, famous faces, or just some sort of code. And in this case, before I go to show you Chautauqua, then you have to see the fact that just like John F. Kennedy in relation to, as you can see, the date, which so happens to work out at 33, um, along with the fact it was in Dallas, Texas. Well, Dallas, Texas is also 33. So when we go back to the Chautauqua Institute, which was where this speech, which was being carried out by Salman Rushdie, was taking place, it turns out that Chautauqua is also 33. In relation to the overall threat some 33 years ago by some Ayatollah, the fact is that when I do my research and I come across the history of these Ayatollahs, past, present and possible future ones to come, the whole word of Ayatollah is actually 33, along with the fact that many of the hoaxes that we see around the world, as in hoax attacks or attack hoaxes, is also 33 and as you will see all the major killings and assassinations are most likely to have live tv audiences to make sure they maximize the exposure of their overall power just to finish up within the salman rush the element it's also interesting that back in 2012 there was an apparent bounty being raised from $2.8 million to $3.3 million. So again, there's your little signal and Easter egg as in how all these things are connected. In relation to the overall Islamic side of the fight or apparent fight between Islam and Christianity, which we're somehow apparently supposed to be witnessing here, if you actually go back to this gentleman here, Muhammad Ibn Abd al-Wahhab, he was actually, I suppose, one of the major innovators of the far extreme right of Islam. And the question has always been in terms of how is it connected to the world today? Well, in truth, Wahhabi Islam is actually centered within Saudi Arabia, as it long has been. And once again, when I do my research and add the numbers and the names, it just so happens to be that Wahhabi Islam is also 33. And to go further, when you go back to the 9-11 staged event, this is how it all ties in with the fact that the apparent major ringleader from Saudi Arabia was supposed to be this man, aged 33. I hope you enjoyed this limited upload in relation to the way this world operates. And please, if you haven't already, please have a look at my other videos that are here online. Thanks. Listen, you're in a privileged position to learn a thing or two. Keep your mouth shut and your eyes open.
Everybody be cool. You be cool.